Thank you, everyone, for being here. Good afternoon. I don't have any uh, commercial uh, interests, uh, meaning my talk uh, should be uh, unbiased. Uh, this is a picture of the uh, new Byers Eye Institute at Stanford. Uh, we moved into this building in 2010, and it's uh, essentially the uh, main uh, vision care uh, center and research uh, facility at Stanford. So I'll start by telling you about what is a neuro-ophthalmologist. It's sort of a mouthful. Uh, it's basically doctors who are interested in conditions that affect vision due to nervous system issues. So for uh, patients with Parkinson's disease or Parkinsonism, uh, this is really one of our main interests. And there are about 200 neuro-ophthalmologists in the US. Uh, we actually rely on uh, the ophthalmologist, the optometrist, and the neurologist to often uh, do the initial screening so patients with any trouble with vision may present to uh, these other doctors first and then they may send these uh, patients to us. So uh, we work uh, very well together as a team uh, along with the uh, uh, experts in vision rehab. So a brief history of uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, it was initially described by James Parkinson in 1817. And uh, historically, if you take it out of his monograph, uh, he described uh, a condition where there are muscles that fail to answer with exactness to the dictates of the will, meaning a difficulty with movement. And this is not just movement of the body, but also movement of the eyes. So we'll talk about that uh, quite a bit more uh, later on. So we, our understanding of uh, Parkinson's and Parkinsonism these days is that it's a slowly progressive disorder involving pigmented neurons in the brainstem, specifically the substantia nigra, and uh, just as important, uh, locus ceruleus. This is a deficiency of neurotransmitter uh, dopamine, but this is a gross simplification, but it helps to understand uh, what is part of the explanation for why people have trouble moving. And the treatment, uh, including cinnamon or other medications, are meant to replace dopamine. But some of you may already know that this is actually uh, really not uh, perfect in terms of it's not a cure for the disease. It doesn't even perfectly treat a lot of the issues. Uh, but replacing the dopamine does help people move. So it's the first step uh, in uh, many steps that we're continuing to work on uh, to help patients. And one thing that you may not know is that uh, PD also affects the uh, dopaminergic or the pigmented uh, uh, cells in the eye. And so that's part of the reason that vision is a big problem in uh, patients with PD. So some of the common uh, complaints for patients in PD, uh, they may simply just have difficulty with vision. Can't really describe it any better than that. And so you could imagine that it's sort of hard. You know, all they could say is, you know, I just can't see well. I don't know why. I'm not sure if it's my left eye or the right eye or the two eyes together, but I just can't see well. I can't read well. Tell me what's wrong. Uh, another uh, common thing is people may say, you know, I just, I, I'm okay taking a walk and seeing things, but I just can't read anymore. And this has been getting worse. Uh, difficulty driving is another common complaint. Again, uh, not clearly sure why they're having trouble with driving, but simply that they can't do it as well as they used to. Uh, another uh, common complaint may be their eyes are irritated, so dry eyes uh, is a very common condition. It's actually uh, the, probably the most common eye problem uh, affecting uh, all of us. Uh, so dry eyes, uh, very common and also particularly common in PD. And then there are other issues like uh, hallucinations and cognitive issues that also contribute to trouble with vision that I won't go into. So to break it down just a little bit uh, of the different complaints that we talked about, um, difficulty with vision can be from many causes, anywhere from the eye to the brain. Difficulty reading often is related to a condition called convergence insufficiency. When you read, you have to actually cross your eyes in order to focus up close. So that ability to cross your eyes can be affected in PD, and so that's called convergence insufficiency. Uh, difficulty driving can sometimes be from double vision 
or difficulty moving the eyes. And then irritated eyes uh, could be from dry eyes, as I mentioned before. So he's a um, fairly typical patient. Um, this uh, case is actually taken from the uh, novel collection, which is part of the uh, collection for the uh, North American Neuroophthalmology Society. So you're welcome to actually um, check it out. Uh, novel is spelled N-O-V-E-L. So um, this is a typical patient who has bradykinesia, meaning slowness of movement, shuffling gait, meaning difficulty moving or walking, uh, causing a significant fall risk, Rigidity, meaning uh, the limbs, the arms or the legs can be uh, simply rigid as part of the difficulty moving, and there may be a tremor. So why would they see a neuro-ophthalmologist or ophthalmologist? Um, so in this particular case, it's for double vision. So we're going to come back to this case, uh, but this is a fairly common referral from the Parkinson's Institute. So the three parts to my talk. Uh, number one, I'm going to go over what's normal vision and normal control of eye movement and what kind of evaluations we do. Uh, the second part is why do patients with PD have trouble with vision? So we're going to go through some cases so you could, and I'm probably going to ask for some audience help at that point. Uh, and then lastly, we'll, we'll talk a bit about driving and the issues uh, concerning that. So number one, normal vision and the vision evaluation. So um, maybe let me pause for just a brief second here. Anyone with questions already? Um, so it depends on if you have any trouble with your vision. I would recommend that if you have any concern about your vision that you should see somebody because um, it could be something very simple, you know, correct pair of glasses, etc. So um, I would recommend that if you have any issue with your eyes or with your visual function to go ahead and see somebody. Um, that would be ideal, however, there aren't that many people who are especially trained in vision and Parkinson's disease. So um, a very good starting point is actually to see an optometrist, uh, just to see if you need reading glasses or you need some kind of, you know, something tweaked that's relatively simple. And they are actually quite good at recognizing who should be the next person to see you. So an optometrist or ophthalmologist uh, some, somebody who is close to home, maybe someone that you got a, you know, a friend or a family member who uh, has, you know, had a good experience with this person. That's a really good starting point. I just had my eyes examined, and I didn't even know that Parkinson's could be related to eye problems. But I've never had an optometrist ask me if I had Parkinson's disease. And I was wondering, actually, I was going to ask a question to the group, is is how many people here have ever had an, opto uh, an optometrist ask you, do you have Parkinson's disease, or what medications you take that would be a, a clue to that? Yeah, maybe we could just do a quick survey. Who here has seen an optometrist that actually asked about the Parkinson's disease? Don't be shy. There, there must be more than one hand. <laughs> no? Um, I think um, the, the, the difficulty is, like you said before, not a lot of people are specifically trained uh, to recognize the issues in Parkinson's disease. So uh, it's great that you're all here because now you could be your own advocate. So you would know what to ask. Um, but you know, for a routine ophthalmologist evaluation, so I mean, this is a medical doctor who was trained through medical school, residency, you know, et cetera. They're supposed to go over the entire battery of things, including your uh, past and current medical issues, medication, allergies, you know, et cetera. So it should be part of a routine ophthalmology evaluation. When you say, sign in, everybody asks you what medications you're taking. Yeah. Yeah. And that should be a clue right there. Yes. Um, so it's good to um, make sure that you give the provider your list of medications, but it's not always enough, right? People don't necessarily make the connection 
um, that this medication may affect the Parkinson's aspect. Um, but you know, we're uh, sort of in some ways box checkers. So you know, we're all trained to do lists and, and make sure we do these things. But I'm hoping at the end of today's lecture, uh, you'll be able to take it a little bit further.